Welcome to the EKG Guy. My name is Dr. Anthony Kashu. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Now, either you're coming back for another case, which is awesome, or it's your first time. Either way, so glad you could join us today. Um, now, we're going to be doing the cases right from our free practice uh, site where you can have registered for free. So uh, many of you are already on it, but if not, this is uh, the site right here, practice.ekgguy.com. So simply go there. You could register for free, get started, and uh, we'll get through this case. Now, I know there's many of you, and it's always amazing to see those that continue to follow us. Follow us on Facebook. There's now over you know, 1.3 million of you. So uh, truly a blessing. Never thought this would happen. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in the case. So here we have an ECG obtained from a 47 a year old hypotensive female with viral gastroenteritis. And there's quite a few important findings here, so let's go through them. Now first, notice the presence of upright P waves in lead two and inverted P waves in lead AVR, suggesting a normal P wave axis. Okay, and these findings, in addition to a constant P wave morphology, regular P to P intervals, and an atrial rate that we'll look at is around 60 beats per minute, all favor normal sinus rhythm. So let's look at those here. So if you look at lead two, okay, the, here's the rhythm strip. You can see these upright P waves, okay? There's one actually hiding there, but notice you have all these P waves throughout, same morphology uh, that's going on, okay? If you look at AVR, which is this one here, here are our, our P waves that we see, they are inverted uh, there. So knowing that we have a normal P wave axis in the frontal plane, if we look at the P to P intervals, so from one P wave to the next, we would see that these are all the same. So we have a regular atrial rhythm, and the same is true with the ventricular rhythm. We see normal conducted P waves through to the ventricle. Um, and the other thing is we talked about the morphology being constant in the rhythm strip, as we see, and the rate. So let's find the rate. We know from beginning all the way to end, uh, is 10 seconds, so 10 seconds on our standard uh, ECG strip, 10 times six is 60 seconds, which is one minute. So we can find the atrial rate. So the atrial rate can be determined by finding the number of P waves, multiply that by six, and that gives us a rate in beats per minute. And so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we have uh, 10 P waves uh, present, and we know that 10 times six is 60, and that's a good estimate. The rate actually from the computer was uh, 62 beats per minute, uh, so within that normal range. So 60 beats per minute, and because of that, we have a sinus rhythm. So uh, first and foremost, sinus rhythm is present, and it is a normal sinus rhythm given the atrial rate. Now you'll see sinus rhythm used alone. And when we say sinus rhythm al alone, it actually infers that there's a normal atrial rate. Okay, so sinus rhythm or normal sinus rhythm, uh, you may hear, but if it's sinus rhythm, that's what someone's telling you, they're inferring a normal or it originating from the sinus node as well as a normal rate, okay? Otherwise, they would classify as a slow sinus bradycardia or sinus tachycardia, okay? Now, secondly, notice the marked prolonged QT interval, okay? That's especially evident in any of the rhythm strips that we have here, and I'm showing you lead two and V1, and we have the V5 below that, but look at all of them. The QT interval is above 600 milliseconds. The QTC interval is actually 629 milliseconds. And so this prolonged QT interval can easily be noticed by noticing that it's greater than one half the R to R interval in this rhythm at a normal rate, okay? So if we look here, so that is just a clear space. So now we're talking about this QT T interval, all right, includes the QRS complex, the ST segment, and the T wave. All right, so all of ventricular depolarization and repolarization. Notice if you look at this R to R interval, and this is a normal rate rhythm, it is going well beyond that halfway point, okay, right here. So that is already prolonged. When you have a normal uh, rhythm at a normal rate and it's beyond that, that's a, a trick to get you to see, see that this is a prolonged. Now, that's not the same as true with fast rhythms uh, in we have to use a different approach. But in this case, you have a prolonged QT interval, clearly prolonged, okay? We said that essentially, if you look from this point to this, 
All right, each one of these 200 milliseconds, so 200, 400, 600, and it's over that uh, 600 milliseconds. The QTC was 629, way above what we would expect uh, for normal. We think of prolonged QT in males of 470 or greater and females 480 milliseconds or greater. Normally it's that 500 milliseconds that we start to be more alarmist, okay, where we caution what we do with the patient. So uh, let's move on. There's a few other things that we have to note here. We said that the patient uh, presented and was hypotensive, okay? Did you notice that? And hypotensive in the setting of a viral gastroenteritis. And in the absence of any other clinical data or prior ECG available here, this should raise concern for hypokalemia, so low serum potassium levels. And that's one thing you want to keep in mind, especially with that prolonged QT. There's a few other findings. Sometimes we see U waves uh, with, uh, with hypokalemia, but not always present, okay? We could see SD depression, flattened T waves uh, that occur with this. Often that is not until the potassium levels get below 2.7. But anyways, we see a prolonged QT interval here uh, in the setting of this clinical setting, we want to keep that in mind, okay? And that was the case in this case. Now, replacing the patient's potassium, that can actually help normalize the QT interval, and that's one thing uh, you'd want to do. Now, lastly, in the clinical context of this diagnosis of hypokalemia, we want to make sure that we diagnose electrolyte disturbances with the ST T-wave abnormalities, okay? So also diagnose that. All right, you see a little curving of the ST segment there, um, but you want to keep in mind, notice the flattening here, okay? You can see that uh, it appears that there's your, your T wave. Now, one thing to keep in mind is because these we said U waves uh, can occur, we often see them most prominently in the precordial lead, so it's possible that that is one there that we're seeing. Now, we there's no clear U wave, so we're not going to mark that down, but the U waves, you can have what's called a T wave, U wave fusion, okay? So if the T wave and the U wave fuse, and as a result, it actually can make the actual QT interval appear more prolonged than it is, okay? So like that, because maybe the QT interval actually comes to that point, but with the U wave, if that is one, uh, it's making it longer. So we call uh, that the appearance, a QU interval um, as such, okay? So those are the main uh, findings that you want to keep in mind uh, as you go through this. There's a, a number of other features that we point out, um, but those are the main ones. So just to recap what we said was going on, the, the main rhythm was sinus rhythm, okay, so normal sinus rhythm. We also noted that there's a uh, prolonged QT interval. We saw it's very prolonged in this case. We talked about the clinical context of this female hypotensive viral gastroenteritis, maybe uh, vomiting um, so much. Well, you want to keep in line low potassium levels. And also in context with that low potassium level, you want to also make the diagnosis of the electrolyte disturbance, okay, in those associated ST abnormalities. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. That's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. I hope you found that case helpful. You learned something and took something away that you can use to benefit the patients you care for or even teach it to some of your students. Again, thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't registered, register for free at practice.ekgguide.com or follow us on Facebook uh, and stay in touch.